Um, I, uh, I started caving in the uh, late 60s um, and then got involved in organized caving in the late 70s uh, before I'd ever seen the game, or I guess maybe even before it was written, but a near thing. It was close one way or the other. And, uh, but uh, I definitely had been caving and surveying caves uh, before I uh, latched on to the idea that uh, there was this game out there that uh, uh, was so closely related to to the caves and and uh, and described them in a, in a manner that uh, uh, would appeal to a caver um, and not just uh, not just anybody. Um, um, the descriptions were so vivid that. Uh, uh, in text that uh, I could immediately picture uh, what the cave was like uh, just based on the descriptions and based on my knowledge of caves in general. had no idea what the cave actually looked like. I, I had pictures in my mind, of course, from the descriptions. Um, but when I first saw the game, I said, well, you know, I, I, I have to have this game and because uh, it's just too neat. It's, it's so closely... Uh, uh, represents what we do when we're caving to begin with that I really wanted a copy and in order to do that I had to get a computer so I went out and bought a computer <laughs> and then went off in search of a game to play on it and uh, uh, ended up playing uh, uh, Zork and Zork, Zork 2 before I ever uh, got my operating system set up to where I could actually uh, play Adventure which was the game I tried to play wanted to play initially and uh, then uh, later on, af after I'd been playing the game for many years and never really finished it, never didn't get all through all the puzzles and everything, um, although I solved many at one time or another, and then later on forgot how I had solved them and would have to go back and figure it all out all over again. Um, I uh, came out here to Kentucky uh, with my girlfriend and... Uh, Lo and behold, I was I was given the opportunity to take a map sheet, and I said, "Well, uh, I had found out by then that uh, Bed Quilt Cave was the cave in the adventure game." And I said, "I want that sheet. <laughs> That's the sheet I want. I want to do the the, the sheet that had the game in it." And uh, being given the opportunity to uh, survey and and take care of a, a particular sheet related to a Mammoth Cave, I knew that Bed Quilt was the uh, one associated with the game, and I said, that's the one I want. Uh, and I want, wanted the opportunity to see all these places that I had pictures of in my mind, but had never actually seen. And, uh, and so, of course, as I started going into the cave uh, to do my survey work, uh, lo and behold, uh, uh, I recognized uh, all these places uh, in the game, in the cave, as I went through. And uh, uh, I'm not the only one to have done this. We had a, a young lady here for a while uh, that was also an adventure game aficionado or whatever. And uh, she actually led a group through the cave, having never been there based on her knowledge of adventure, which is a little bit better than mine, I gather. She must have played it more than I did. And uh, so she she had a great time uh, uh, leading the group through the cave and getting them back out again, having never been there, just from her knowledge of the game. And, uh, uh, and of course, as I started surveying and mapping the cave, and I began to realize that uh, some of the artifacts mentioned in the game are, in fact, located in the cave and remain there to this day. And uh, I, I thought that was kind of special that uh, uh, Will had taken uh, things from the actual cave like that and actually include, found a way to include them uh, in the game, like the axe and the rod. And uh, there, I don't know. There's numerous bottles in the cave. Which one he had in mind, I have no idea. Um, but uh, there are a number of bottles present here and there in the cave. Um, since I'm now doing the map, uh, the maze of twisty little passages 
is going to end up on the map is the pirate's maze since that's where he hit his chest after all and uh, that's what will end up on our our final map sheet when we uh, get the cave fully drawn up um, so Will added that dimension uh, to the cave itself and to the mapping uh, by having written the game and uh, it's just been special for me to have been a part of it all. Um, I enjoyed the game so much and still do. Uh, I still play it from time to time just for grins and uh, I actually started caving in 67 it was the first time I went in a, in a cave that wasn't like a tourist cave where I grabbed a flashlight and ran off into a cave and said wow this is really cool and uh, uh, when I was very young my parents took me to a, a commercial cave in Virginia and uh, they had a, a section called uh, the Explorers Trail apparently the Explorers Club had, from New York had been there in the 20s or something and had gone exploring in the cave and had left these jars behind uh, as evidence of their passing and the furthest extent of their exploration and apparently in the jars was notes encouraging people to carry the jar further into the cave and add their own name and all this and uh, uh, at the time I was I don't know six or seven years old and after the guide told us these stories this does anyone want to go off down the Explorers Trail which of course was unlit and uh, but nevertheless I was off like a shot given the invitation and my parents were yelling at me to come back and everything but I went down until I really couldn't proceed any further without any light <laughs> and uh, 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 came back finally you know and, and my parents yelled at me for running off and then showed me a book about caving and everything and I thought oh gee you know uh, gosh these guys are scientists and they have all this you know education and everything I don't know if I can ever achieve that and, and do that kind of stuff and uh, and then as time went on, you know, and I got involved with organized caving, uh, I later on had the opportunity to go back to these same caverns uh, with a group that was mapping them. And uh, the Explorers Club had left uh, three containers uh, in the cave, two of which had been found by an earlier group uh, that it was mapping in the cave. And we went in and we were mapping, and lo and behold, we found one of the containers. And we carried it further into the cave. <laughs> and, uh, and that was kind of special for me, you know, to, to be able to do that. And uh, uh, the uh, curiosity about, you know, well, where does this cave go? You know, how is it here? Why is it here? And uh, has, has always uh, intrigued me. And uh, it, it's like the Lewis and Clark syndrome is the way I look at it. I'm exploring. I don't know where it goes. But if I go there and I want somebody else to be able to follow me or I want to be able to find my way back reliably, I need to make a map as I go. That's the, the most fundamental part of uh, uh, establishing uh, uh, a relationship between man and whatever environment he has entered. Uh, you know, maps are of varying quality and, and varying purpose. Uh, people create maps uh, to know how to get from here to there. Uh, then you create another map that says, well, while you're on the way from here to there, uh, here's some of the things that you might notice along the way. And you may create another map that's you know specified for, uh, well, while you're on your way from here to there, not only will you see thus and so and, and this kind of pretty pictures, but uh, there's certain types of biology represented here that uh, you won't see anywhere else. And so you learn more and more and you, di you, you dig deeper and deeper. Uh, and it's all based on the map. You know, nobody can get there if they don't know where it is. And the map is how you, get, how you communicate where it is and where things are. And uh, so the mapping portion of it is... is uh, it's also a way to bring it back and say, see, I did this. I, I was here. I created this map. That's proof that I was there.
and I did this. Um, I've encountered people over the years who say, oh yeah, I explored such and such, and I say, well, great. You know, so how do you show that to anybody else? Well, I, I tell them. Okay, that's great. And once they forget about that conversation, who knows you were there? You know, there's, there's no record of it. And uh, so the map is also a record of your passing, a, a written record for others to see. And uh, it goes beyond just a, a folklore or a verbal communication. I think if they were able to compare our maps and the game, um, it, and on one level it would be completely dissimilar, but on another there's a certain similarity. Uh, the general directions, east, west, north, south, up, down, all hold generally true as you go through the part that Crowther wrote. Um, the east-west cobble crawl does in fact go east and west, primarily. It's not a perfect east nor a perfect west, but it's primarily east and west. Um, the uh, uh, way down into the Hall of Miss is definitely a pit, and it goes down, and you go down and you go up. So uh, uh, the, the general directions of that type are generally true. Uh, I think what's missed uh, in the game, and it's, it would be hard to communicate it, uh, as you go from place to place, you're kind of teleporting. And there's actually a great deal of, of effort, uh, human effort, that is required to go from point to point. Um, so what in the game takes a few keystrokes may in fact take about 10 to 15 to 20 minutes to actually accomplish in uh, uh, real time in the cave. Uh, whether it be because you're crawling along through something that's relatively small, or because uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, the game doesn't describe all of the breakdown and all of the, the varying passage sizes that you may encounter as you go from uh, uh, point A to point B. And uh, it describes very well point A and point B. It doesn't necessarily describe everything in between. And, uh, and so the maps that we draw uh, try to fill in the gaps. <laughs> One of the methods in which they used in trying to map it, because there were so many, it's a, it's a very mazy cave to begin with. And so they, were, they actually did try a, a verbal description uh, methodology of determining uh, what places looked like and things like that, just to give another dimension to the mapping. And it's not a dimension normally used. Uh, by the general survey and mapping community uh, in caves. You, if you're going to go in a cave, you need to be prepared for what you're, you're going to do, because uh, uh, if you're not, uh, the consequences can be quite serious. Um, if you're lucky, you survive it, uh, if you're unprepared. But uh, people die in caves, people that are unprepared. People that are prepared occasionally die in caves to due to circumstances either beyond their control or something they just didn't plan for that occurs. Um, you know, we constantly preach safety to our members here uh, and tell them, you know, you just can't get lackadaisical about it. you you got to uh, follow up on it, and uh, it's, it's like work. You know, you have to have a safe work environment. When you're going caving, you still have to have a safe caving environment and uh, make sure you've got all your backup equipment and all this and then the other thing. Uh, make sure you have clothing suitable to what you're going to be doing and, uh, you know, uh, uh, be, be prepared for what you're doing. And if you're going into virgin unexplored cave, well, it's hard to be prepared for the unknown. So what you do is you you say, okay, well, when I've encountered this, I needed that. When I encountered this, I needed that. And you take absolutely as much of it with you as you can. And uh, 
uh, it loads you down and makes explora actual exploration and diversion territory a, a bit more work, you know, because you have more stuff with you than you actually need. But then when you come upon something that uh, uh, requires something, you have it with you. You're prepared and you can proceed. If you come upon something and you don't have it with you, well, the smart caver says, gee, I need thus and so to do this, and I don't have it. And they stop and turn around and uh, come back another day and better prepared. You know, um, The foolhardy say, oh, well, I think I can do this without that. And, and occasionally we carry them out of the cave. and uh, Or they get careless and we carry them out of the cave. Uh, I've only been on one or two body recoveries uh, as, as a cave rescuer. Uh, and I've been on a few uh, successful rescues where we were able to bring the patient out of the cave and, and uh, get them treatment or get them whatever care they needed. Um, uh, whether it would have been they were lost and just couldn't find their way out. That's happened a couple of times. And so we, it happens. And uh, that's one of the reasons we make maps, is to try and keep people from getting lost in the first place. And uh, so we try to make the maps available within reason. Um, okay. Caving is really special, but it's not for everyone. Uh, it takes certain types of people to do it and enjoy it and love it. And if you try it and you find you're not enjoying it and loving it, you should probably move on to something else. Uh, but I would encourage anybody that is curious and uh, uh, adventurous to uh, give it a try because uh, uh, it's a wonderful adventure. And, uh, and in caving, the adventure never ends. It really doesn't. So, I'm having a great time.